Hooray! You've made it to the end of Module 7. This is the tenth video in this module. Last time I talked a little bit more about terrain analysis. I talked about view sheds. I talked about contours. I talked about tins. And remember that the contours and the tins are ways to visualize terrain using the vector model. I've got one more thing I need to talk about in this model and that's what's called resampling. When you have more than one data set, raster data set, that you're trying to combine into a single output data set, <coughs> or if you just want to um, process one data set and, and make a different output data set, sometimes you have cell size or projection compatibility issues. In this left example, you can see where we have larger cells in one of our data sets and smaller cells. This one, we have a data set that's oriented a little bit differently than that data set. So if we were going to combine these, say, let's use um, map algebra and combine these, it would be difficult to do addition. How would I add something like this cell of this data set into whatever cell it is in the other data set? So what you have to do is you have to resample things so that you're using common cell sizes and orientations. So here's an example. We have an input raster that is not square cells. So you can imagine this might be an unprojected raster because up north of the equator, remember that the longitude lines converge. So lines that might be equal in angular measure are not going to be equal in linear measure when you get further and further north. So we have one data set that's like that, and we want to make an output data set that's nice and orthogonal, has nice square cells, so we want the output data set to be like that. So this mark here is the center of our output data set for this cell. So how do we know what value to give that cell center in the new data set based upon all of these other cell centers in the input data set? Well, that's resampling. There's three ways you can do it in ArcGIS. One is called nearest neighbor, and that one is just like it sounds. You go to your output data set cell center, and you look around and you find the nearest neighbor in your input data set, and you say, just take that value and use it in my output data set. It's called nearest neighbor. That's going to be good for categorical data, the nominal and the ordinal data. So if my new cell is closest to this old cell, then if the old cell was forest, we'll call the new cell forest, for example. Good for categorical data. Doesn't create any new values, right? This is a value that gets moved to here. It doesn't make any new values at all. Okay, we can do interpolation. And in the next module, I'll talk a little bit more about interpolation. You saw that we used interpolation to do contour lines. Um, there are two types of interpolation we can do in ArcGIS. One's called bilinear. So again, we have our black input data set and our red output data set. We need to assign a value to this cell in the output data set. What we're going to do is we're going to go out to the four nearest neighbors and we're going to interpolate the values between our four nearest neighbor using bilinear interpolation. We're going to use Tobler's law, which says basically nearer things are more related than things that are further away. So the cells that in the input data set that are closer to the output cell are going to get more weight than the ones that are further away. This is going to work well for continuous data. Notice it's going to do interpolation, so it's going to create new values. So what I've done here is I've just rotated things. So now my input data set is vertical and horizontal, and my output data set looks rotated. So you can imagine I just rotated the screen from the last thing. Here we have my new value that I need to determine. Here are my four nearest neighbors from the input data set. So I need to interpolate bilinearly to get that new value. So how do I do that? I zoomed in on just this cell. So this is the output data set cell center. These are the nearest neighbors from the input data set. How does bilinear interpolation work? Well, what you do is you, is you start in one direction, in the x direction, and you say, my new center is this far from the edge, out of a total distance this far between these two points. So I can do linear interpolation and, and find out what the value would be here based upon the value here and the value here. I can interpolate, get a value here. That gives me a value up at the top. I can repeat that down at the bottom and say, 
this cell is this far from this edge, and this is the total distance between the cells in the input data set down at the bottom, so I can interpolate and get a point here. So now I have a point whose value is between that value and that value. I have a point whose value is between that value and that value. Now we can go in the y direction and say this cell center is this far away from this edge out of that total distance. And so the value here is interpolated as somewhere between this value and this value weighted by that interpolation fraction. And that's going to give us the bilinear interpolation output cell resampling. Notice what's going to happen is whatever we're doing we're going to interpolate between existing values. So this value will always be between the extremes of our existing values. Okay, we can do what's called cubic convolution. Bilinear interpolation used four neighbors. Cubic convolution is going to use 16 neighbors and it's going to fit a cubic equation and do the interpolation that way. Okay, I won't go through the details of cubic convolution because it's kind of complicated, a lot of math, you don't really need to know the math to do it, but you need to know which method to use when you're doing resampling. And you'll have the opportunity to do resampling a lot of the times when you're using tools. And if you choose the wrong method, you might have an output data set that really isn't as good as it could be. So, for categorical data, we want to use nearest neighbor. What does nearest neighbor gives us? It gives us no new values, only the same values that were in the input categorical data set. And it can be kind of blocky if we have continuous data. So if we get a DEM, an elevation raster, that has continuous values for elevation, and we use nearest neighbor resampling, that's going to give us an output data set that doesn't look smooth and continuous. You can use bilinear interpolation. This is good for continuous data. And you can see that it kind of smooths out things. So there aren't any strong, distinct boundaries between cell values like there are in this nearest neighbor. So it does some smoothing. And it's bilinear, so it only needs four neighbors, so it's going to process pretty fast. So this is a good choice for most resampling conditions. And remember, bilinear is not going to create any values that are larger or smaller than the input values. So it's always going to give you data that are within the bounds of your input values. Cubic. Cubic's going to give us, you can see, the smoothest representation. So even with bilinear, we're going to get some sharp edges in some of our interpolations. With cubic, we're going to round those off and we're going to have smoother data. It's good for continuous data. It's going to take a lot more time to compute, but you also have to be careful because it can overshoot and undershoot things. It can fit a curve that goes higher than the highest value or lower than the lowest value. So, categorical good, stay within the extremes of the input data, smoother, might go over or under the input data. So those are your three options when you do resend. Okay, that's the end of the raster model. The next model module is going to be about statistics and interpolation. I'll show you a few more things about how interpolation can be done, all the way up to some very complex interpolation techniques, and some of the statistics that you can apply, both a review of basic descriptive statistics that don't have anything to do with spatial relationships and some spatial statistics that allow you to get more information about, inf about data that has a spatial component. So that'll be the next module.